Hello students, how are you all doing? I hope all of you are doing really well. In today's chapter, we are going to study My Childhood, which is from Beehive Book. Students, My Childhood is written by APJ Abdul Kalam. Basically, this chapter is an extract from Wings of Fire, which you know is an autobiography of APJ Abdul Kalam. In this picture, you can see students, we have a childhood photograph of APJ Abdul Kalam and his autobiography Wings of Fire. Before you read, can you think of any scientist who have also been statesman? Please give it a think and let me know. APJ Abdul Kalam, whose projects in space, defense and nuclear technology guided India into the 21st century, became our 11th president in 2002. In his autobiography, Wings of Fire, he speaks of his childhood. Abdul Kalam, in full, Awul Pakir Janulabdin Abdul Kalam was born on 15th October 1931 at Rameshwaram in Tamil Nadu and died on July 27, 2015 in Shillong. Indian scientist and politician who played a leading role in the development of India's missile and nuclear weapon programs. He was President of India from 2002 to 2007. Kalam received seven honorary doctorates from 40 universities. The Government of India honoured him with the Padma Bhushan in 1981 and the Padma Vibhushan in 1990. For his work with ISRO and DRDO and his role as a scientific advisor to the government. In 1997, Kalam received India's highest civilian honour, the Bharat Ratna, for his contribution to the scientific research and modernization of defense technology in India. So students, this was a very short introduction of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Now we will begin reading the chapter. I was born into a middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram in the erstwhile Madras state. So here I, I stands for APJ Abdul Kalam. He is saying that he was born into a very middle class Tamil family in the island town of Rameshwaram, which is in the Madras state. Now erstwhile means former, former it was known as Madras state. My father, Janul Abdin, had neither much formal education nor much wealth. So here you can see the picture of his father, Janul Abdin. He is saying that he did not go through formal education. Neither did he had much wealth. Okay. Despite these disadvantages, he possessed great innate wisdom and a true generosity of spirit. So APJ Abdul Kalam is saying that Despite these disadvantages, despite that he did not have formal education, he did not have much wealth, but still he was having great innate wisdom and true generosity of spirit. Innate means a quality which is inborn in one's nature, okay, from birth. And generosity means the quality of being kind and generous. He had an ideal helpmate in my mother, Ashiyamma, 
and do not recall the exact number of people she fed every day but i'm quite certain that far more outsiders ate with us than all the members of our family put together so apj abdul kalam is saying that his mother ashi amma she was really kind as she used to feed a lot of people every day because he did not recall how many exact number but he was very sure that more outsiders came to have meal with them than all the family put together i was one of many children a short boy with rather undistinguished looks born to tall and handsome parents so here we have a picture of apj abdul kalam with his parents right and he is saying that i was very ordinary looking the word undistinguished means very ordinary so he is saying that i was really born to a tall and handsome parents but i was a very short boy with ordinary looks we lived in our ancestral house which was built in the middle of the 19th century so they were living in the ancestral house the house which belonged to their ancestors you know the family have been living in that house for generations which was built in the middle of 19th century and here we have a picture of the house you can see here yes it was a fairly large pakka house made of limestone and brick on the mosque street in rameshwaram so the house was large pakka house made of limestone and brick and it was situated on the mosque street in rameshwaram yes so this is a picture of the house which is renovated okay this is how his house looks currently my austere father used to avoid all in essential comforts and luxuries however all necessities were provided for in terms of med food medicines or clothes so apj abdul kalam is saying that his father was very austere it means simple strict and severe he did not like spending money in things which were only meant for comfort and luxury but he made sure that all the necessary things like food like medicine or clothes were given to the family members like uh, we can relate to apj's father right all our father they are typically like this they are very strict and they also know where to spend their hard earned money they don't want to waste money on things which are very temporary which will give us happiness for only short time right so his father was also like that and he used to you know very wisely spend his money and not just spend on things which are meant for luxury in fact i would say mine was a very secure childhood both materially and emotionally so these lines are very touching that he is saying that i would say mine was a secure childhood both materially and emotionally so from these lines we can see a quality of apj abdul kalam and what quality are we talking about it is that of a gratitude you know you can see that he has a attitude for thankfulness he was happy he was grateful for all the little things he had okay he is not complaining that oh why my father was like that he did not provide us uh, you know uh, luxury things and comfort rather he is saying that my childhood was very secure both materially and uh, emotionally i got a lot of love a lot of comfort from my parents so students we all must learn from him that this is the quality we must possess you know being grateful showing the attitude of gratitude for the things we have in our life you know instead of complaining of the things we don't have 
because we all know that our parents really are working hard to provide us with the things we really need so instead of complaining we all must develop a habit of being grateful of showing our gratitude for the, all the great things we have in our life okay now let's move forward the second world war broke out in 1939 when i was just 8 years old for reasons i have never been able to understand a sudden demand for tamarind seeds erupted in the market so apj abdul kalam is saying that when he was only 8 years old the second world war broke okay and he don't know why he doesn't know the reason but there was a demand for tamarind seeds in the market i used to collect the seeds and sell them to a provision shop on mosque street a day's collection would fetch me the princely sum of 1 anna so since there was a demand for tamarind seeds in the market what abj used to do he used to collect the seeds of tamarind and sell them to a shop in the on the mosque street and how much would he earn while he used to sell, sell these seeds it would fetch him a princely sum of 1 anna okay anna is like a old indian coin which uh, used to be you know the worth of that 1 anna was 6 paise and princely means a generous amount okay so here it has been used ironically that i used to earn princely sum of 1 anna okay where well, we know that 1 anna is very small amount but according to him he was saying that it was princely it was generous it was too much for him okay now here we have a picture of tamarind seeds and also a coin of banana my brother in law jalaluddin would tell me stories about the war which i would later attempt to trace in the headlines in dinamani so his brother in law jalaluddin used to tell him stories about the war right we just mentioned that there used to be a war uh, just the second world war broke out so jalaluddin used to tell him stories about the war which apj abdul kalam later would trace in the headlines in dinamani so dinamani is a tamil newspaper and here we have a picture of dinamani okay our area being isolated was completely unaffected by the war so as we know that there was second world war going on there must be some casualty and some you know losses but uh, ap jabdul kalam is saying that since our area was isolated isolated means in a far away place in a remote place since it was isolated there was not much uh, you know uh, casualty by the war it was unaffected by the war but soon india was forced to join the allied forces and something like a state of emergency was declared now india has to join the allied forces allied forces here means the armies of uk usa and russia during the second world war the first casualty came in the form of suspension of the train halt at rameshwaram station now till now we know that there was no such casualty there was it was not affected but now the first casualty had come and what was that it came in the form of the suspension of the train halt halt means train stop okay so from now the train will not stop at rameshwaram station casualty means loss the newspapers now had to be bundled and thrown out from the moving train on the rameshwaram road between rameshwaram and dhanushkodi so now as a casualty had come the trains will no longer stop at rameshwaram station so what happened the newspaper 
they had now to be bundled and they have to be thrown out of the moving train on the Rameshwaram road between Rameshwaram and Dhanushkodi. That forced my cousin Samsuddin, who distributed newspapers in Rameshwaram, to look for a helping hand to catch the bundles. And as if naturally, I filled the slot. So now someone had to catch the bundles, which was to be thrown from the moving train. And what happened? APJ's cousin, Samsuddin, he thought that I have to look for a helping hand. And as if naturally, very naturally, APJ Abdul Kalam filled the slot. Filled the slot means fill the vacant position of someone to catch the newspapers which was to be thrown from the moving train. Samsuddin helped me earn my first wages. Half a century later, I can still feel the surge of pride in earning my own money for the first time. Now, A.P. Abdul Kalam was really proud of himself and he felt very happy that because of Samsuddin, he was able to earn his first wages. Half a century later, a century is 100 years. So after 50 years, still he can feel that surge. Surge means a sudden forward or upward movement. So he is having a very proud moment that he was able to earn his own money for the very first time by selling newspapers. Every child is born with some inherited characteristics into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment and trained in certain ways by figures of authority. So now APJ Abdul Kalam is saying that every child is born with some inherited characteristics. Inherited means the characteristics which you inherited in inherit from your parents. You know, you, you take from your parents. Like someone can take good height from their parents. Someone can also inherit, uh, you know, uh, eye, color of the eyes, brown eyes or green eyes or blue eyes. So some characteristics which we take from our parents are inherited characteristics. And he is saying that every child is born into a specific socio-economic and emotional environment and they are trained in certain ways by figures of authority. Now figures of authority means a person who has powers to give orders or to make decisions. You know, we have our figures uh, of authority like for a child who is a figure of authority. Their parents are figures of authority for them. When they come to school, their teachers, their principal, they are the figures of authority for them. I inherited honesty and self-discipline from my father. From my mother, I inherited faith in goodness and deep kindness. And so did my three brothers and sister. So I told you, you inherited some characteristics from your parents. In case of APJ Abdul Kalam, he had inherited honesty and self-discipline from his father. And what has he taken from his mother? Faith in goodness and deep kindness. We all know that she really had, you know, kind nature. She used to feed people from outside. They used to come to their house and have food. So these show us that he, she was really very kind-hearted. I had three close friends in my childhood. Ramanatha Shastri, Aravindam and Shiva Prakashan. So now APJ is mentioning about his three close friends which he had in his childhood. The names are Ramanatha Shastri, Aravindam and Shiva Prakashan. All these boys were from orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. Right? Orthodox means someone who follows the traditional rules or beliefs of a religion. So these three boys, they belong to orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. As children, 
none of us ever felt any difference among us amongst ourselves because of our religious differences and upbringing so apj abdul kalam is saying that we have never felt that we belong to different religion because they have they have so much of harmony they have so much of peace between them you know they were very united they lived very happily in fact ramanatha shastri was the son of pakshi lakshmana shastri the high priest of rameshwaram temple so here we have a picture of rameshwaram temple and apj abdul kalam is saying that ramanatha shastri who was one of his very close friends was the son of the high priest pakshi lakshman shastri later he took over the priesthood of the rameshwaram temple from his father aravindam went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims and shiva prakashan became a catering contractor for the southern railways so now he is mentioning what his friends did after some time you know after they grew up so uh, aravindam went into the business of arranging transport for visiting pilgrims shiva prakashan became a uh, catering contractor for the southern railways and uh, uh, ramanatha shastri he took over the priesthood of the rameshwaram temple during the annual shri sita ram kalyanam ceremony our family used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site situated in the middle of the pond called drama tirtha which was near our house so this is the pond you can see drama tirtha pond now apj is saying that during the annual shri sita ram kalyanam ceremony the family you know they used to arrange boats with a special platform for carrying idols of the lord from the temple to the marriage site so these you know these incidents tell us that though they belong to a different religion they were muslim but they were very happily you know participating in uh, you know hindu religions okay they were doing participation in the festivals which were meant to be for hindus so this shows us that how much unity they had in them you know they don't have any discrimination between religions different religions and tra- traditions and customs this is a picture during the annual shri sita ram kalyanam ceremony and this is the same picture you can see how they are you know uh, people hindus and muslims they are going together how much unity they have in them they are celebrating the festival together so it's really nice we should also learn from them events from the ramayan and from the life of the prophet were the bedtime stories my mother and grandmother would tell the children in our family so again this is another incident of the proof that they did not have any regional barriers they did not have any religious barriers the mother and the grandmother how they used to tell the children in the family the stories of ramayan and prophet okay and the prof uh, life of the prophet so from the very beginning from the childhood itself they were instilled with you know unity with they were told stories hindu stories and also muslim stories so they have idea about both the religions they respect both the religions and all the religions why only both so this is the example which were being set by the mother and grandmother of the family and how they were you know giving the good very good upbringing were given to the apj abdul kalam and his uh, you know uh, siblings one day when i was in the fifth standard at the rameshwaram elementary school a new teacher came to our class i used to wear a cap which marked me as a muslim and i always sat in the front row next to ramanatha shastri who wore the sacred thread so here he is saying that you can see in the picture students that how apj abdul kalam is wearing a cap which is marking him 
as a Muslim boy. And other boys, including Ramanatha Shastri, is wearing a sacred thread across their shoulder, which is, which is marking them as a Hindu boy. So let's see, the new teacher has come to the class and we will see what happens next. The new teacher could not stomach a Hindu priest's son sitting with a Muslim boy. In accordance with our social ranking, as the new teacher saw it, I was asked to go and sit on the back bench. So the new teacher who has come to the class, he could not tolerate, he could not digest that how a Hindu priest's son Right. He is sitting with a Muslim boy. Like the Muslims, they were seen as, you know, they belong to low ranking, according to the new teacher. So, A.P. Abdul Kalam was asked to go and sit on the back bench. He was not allowed to sit in the on front row with his friend. I felt very sad and so did Ramanatha Shastri. He looked utterly downcast as I shifted to my seat in the last row. So downcast means sad or depressed. So they both, you know, they were feeling very sad and how this new teacher, they separated the two friends, Ramanada Shastri and A.P. Jabdul Kalam, just because of, he saw that there should be a social ranking. People should, uh, should sit according to their social ranking. This was a really bad act by the teacher. The image of him weeping when I shift to the last row left a lasting impression on me. After school, we went home and told our respective parents about the incident. So students, we will read the chapter till here only. In the next class, we will continue reading the chapter and see what happens next. Before we end the class, we will just go through certain questions and answers to brush up our memory of what all we have read till now and we have understood. Okay, so let's begin. Where was Dr. APG Abdul Kalam born? The first question is, where was Dr. APG Abdul Kalam born? I'm sure all of you know the answer, right? Yes, he was born in the town of Rameshwaram. Tamil Nadu. So now it is known as Tamil Nadu, but erstwhile it was known as Madras. The next question. What was the age of Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam when the Second World War broke out? So I told you that he was only eight years old, right, when the Second World War broke out. The next question. In what ways his childhood was secure? You remember students, I told you, right? He says that my childhood was very secure, both materially and emotionally. So this, uh, from these lines, we knew uh, that he had a feeling of gratitude. He was provided with all the necessities like food, medicine and clothes. Also, his parents dearly loved him and cared for him. So this is how we can say that the APJ Abdul Kalam's childhood was really a secure one. All the three close friends of APJ Abdul Kalam belong to Orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. Now you have to tell whether the statement is true or false. I hope all of you know, I told you that yes, it's true that all the three friends, Ramananda Shastri, Aravindam and Shiva Prakashan, they belong to Orthodox Hindu Brahmin families. Kalam's family never arranged boats during the annual Sri Sita Ram Kalyanam ceremony for carrying idols. Is this true or false? Yes, rightly guessed, it is false because they always used to arrange boats during the annual Sri Sita Ram Kalyanam ceremony. The new teacher asked Abdul to sit on the back bench corresponding to the social ranking. Yes, we have just discussed that he told Abdul to go and sit on the back bench. It is true. And looking at this, uh, his friend Ramanatha Shastri 
was weeping. Right? He did not like the attitude of the teacher. Why is he asking my friend to go and sit on the last bench? Because as friends, you know, they never saw any difference amongst them. No difference based on religion, caste. So they were really, uh, you know, um, living happily and in a harmony. But this teacher had asked Abdul Kalam to go and sit on the back bench. After facing social inequality at school, both the children kept it as secret and did not inform anybody about it. So is it true or false? Yes, it is false. Because they went home and they informed their parents about what has happened in the school. So do you think they have done the right thing by informing their parents? Yes, definitely yes. Because something which happens at school and you think it is not right, it's wrong. You should certainly go and inform your figures of authority, your parents, about it. Because they will see how to handle the situation in a correct way. Okay, so we should never keep these things at secret from our parents. We should go and tell them about the problems or any, you know, difficulties we have faced in our school. Okay, so this was the end of the question answers and... Uh, I really hope all of you have understood the chapter, all of you have liked the chapter and you are looking forward to know what happens next. So, we will meet in the next class. Till then, take care.